The movie begins in 2015 in Mangansari village, central Java. Salastri, the village's most talented wrong gang dancer, is assigned to entertain four students who have come to the village for an internship. Meanwhile, a young man named Imam, who is in love with Salastri, sits outside her house, holding a ring to propose to her. At that moment, a madman named Wong So arrives and starts calling for Salastri. Imam confronts him, asking what he wants, to which Wong So claims that Salastri is his future wife. Enraged by this, Imam drives Wong So away. After Wong So leaves, Imam takes out a cigarette, but suddenly, the wind picks up, lightning flashes in the sky, and the house lights go out, plunging everything into silence. Concerned for Salastri, Imam enters the house, where a man attacks him, and the scene abruptly cuts away. Seven years later, we are introduced to Lara's, who is taking a shortcut through a forest on her way home. Suddenly, her foot gets stuck in something, causing her to fall. She realizes it's a piece of cloth, and when she pulls on it, she discovers it's buried deep in the ground. Curious, Lara's follows the cloth to a certain spot and starts digging. And as she does, we see a black liquid begin to seep out of a nearby well. Lara's uncovers a buried bag, and the black liquid starts moving toward her as she examines its contents. Excited by what she has found, Lara's begins to carry the items with her. But only then, she hears Salastri calling her name. Lara's turns around but sees no one, and as she walks away, a hand emerges from the well. Later, Lara's checks the tape recorder at her house, replaces the batteries, and tries to play it. But just then, her mother Ayu calls her to come for dinner. During the meal, Ayu asks when Haiti plans to propose to her, to which Lara's responds that she doesn't want to get married anytime soon. Ayu asks if Lara still remembers learning the wrong gang dance with Mrs. Menier and recalls how Lara's once said she wanted to be like Salastri. Lara's admits she can't do it and mentions that. To this day, Mrs. Menier hasn't asked her to replace Salastri. Ayu points out that they still haven't found a replacement and encourages Lara's to try again. Lara's replies that she can't because she hasn't been practicing. Ayu then mentions that she still has Lara's shawl and, despite Lara's saying she doesn't need to take it out, Ayu brings the shawl, places it on Lara's, and urges her to try dancing. Lara's begins to dance, but quickly stops, saying she doesn't want to do it and that it would only be embarrassing. Ayu becomes upset prompting Lara's to reassure her that she doesn't need to worry as she plans to be a good and smart sub-district officer. Hearing this, Ayu becomes very sad and quietly leaves. Lara's returns to her room and tries to play the tape recorder, but then she notices that the wristwatch Haiti gave her is missing, and she realizes that it must have fallen in the forest. She removes the batteries from the tape recorder, puts them back into her flashlight, and heads out to search for her watch in the forest. After some searching, she finds the watch and puts it back on. However, just as she's about to leave, she hears a whisper. Startled, Lara's turns to check and hears Salastri calling her name. Confused and uneasy, she moves toward the well and looks inside, but sees nothing. Later that night, the tape recorder turns on by itself, and wrong gang music begins to play. And as the haunting melody fills the room, a shawl slowly starts to move toward Lara's, who is asleep in her bed. Meanwhile, Ayu is awakened by the sound of the music. Concerned, she gets up to investigate and finds Lara's dancing in her room. <laughs> Confused, she steps closer, and as she pulls back the curtain, she is happy to see Lara's dancing so beautifully. But as she approaches her, Lara suddenly collapses. The next day, Ayu takes her to Mrs. Menier and explains that she brought Lara's because she discovered that Lara's can perform the wrong gang dance. Lara says she can't dance and that her mother is exaggerating, but Ayu insists, telling Mrs. Menier that she must see Lara's dance, adding that even she was shocked by how well Lara's danced. Menier agrees and hands Lara's a shawl, asking her to dance. However, as soon as Lara starts dancing, Menier's students begin to laugh at her awkward moves. Ayu, concerned, urges her to dance like she did the previous night and gives her the shawl she wore then. The moment Laura's puts on the shawl, something changes inside her. She begins to dance with grace and intensity, surprising Menier. As Menier watches, she starts to see Celastri and Laura's. And after observing her for a while, she asks Laura's to stop. Menier then asks where she got the shawl, 
but Laras hugs her, calling her mother, and tells her that she is in the well and needs help. That night, Manure performs a ritual in front of the well, crying as she mourns her daughter Salastri and prays to God for her spirit to find peace. After a while, as Manure begins to leave, she suddenly hears Salastri calling her, which shocks her, and we see Salastri's spirit standing behind her. Manure rushes to Marto and tells him that she has just discovered the truth about what happened to Salastri and that they now have a new wrong gang dancer. The next day, Manure shows Marto Lara's dance, saying that by the seventh crescent moon, she will be ready to become the true wrong gang dancer of Mangansari village. Meanwhile, some women compliment Ayu, noting that she looks more beautiful and that her face appears cleaner. Haiti then arrives and asks Ayu what Laras is doing, to which she explains that Menyur has chosen Laras to be Salastri's replacement as the wrong gang dancer, and she picked this place to showcase her skills. Hadi approaches Marto and Menyur, and Menyur tells Marto that it's time to repay those who made the village prosperous. Confused, Haiti asks what she means, and Marto explains that it's about the four young men who built the windmill for the village. And then, the names of those four men are revealed. We then see the four men on their way to Mangansari village, having been invited back after seven years. Suddenly, their car hits something with a loud thud. They all get out to check, looking around, but see nothing and no one near or under the car. Then, Yudi notices a handprint on the bonnet, which unnerves him as he wonders how it got there. Despite the eerie moment, they decide to move on, but as they restart the car, Wong So suddenly jumps in front of them, grinning with joy seeing them back in the village. Seeing him, Adit remarks that if Wong So is here, they must be close. They follow Wong So to the Mangansari village head office, where Mardo and the villagers warmly welcome them, and Mardo informs them that they can rest in the guest house right away. Adit asks if the house still exists, to which Mardo assures him that it's still in good condition, and asks if they don't mind staying there. Yudi responds that they don't mind, and thanks Mardo for providing them a place to stay. Marto then tells them the award ceremony will be held the following evening, coinciding with the village's anniversary celebration. He then introduces them to Laras, mentioning that she is the newest addition to his staff. After Marto leaves, Lara suggests they leave the car at the office and walk to the guest house. On the way, Audit asks Laras where he can get a signal around the area, to which Laras explains that he would need to go to the hill to get a signal. But if he needs to make a call, he can borrow the phone at the sub-district office. They finally reach the guest house, where Hadi tells them that their photos are still displayed on the wall. Laras informs them that if they want to rest, they can head to their rooms and that dinner will be prepared for them shortly. After Haiti and Laras leave, the scene shifts to a flashback, where Audit emerges from his room and wakes up Yudi, asking what is happening, and they are shocked to see blood on Adit's hands. They rush out in search of Aksan and Ricky, following a trail of blood that leads them to the bathroom. There, they find Aksan and Ricky cleaning up the blood. As they enter the bathroom, Yudi inquires about the dead bodies, to which Aksan reveals that they are Salastri and Imam. Back in the present, Audit says they were here for four months, and Yudi says that one night changed all of their lives. Audit asks who might have committed the crime, and Yudi responds that it could have been himself or Adit. He sits up and says as far as he knows, he is the most logical person. But why didn't he call the police right away back then? Because he knew he could be the killer. Lars then serves them dinner, and when Ricky asks if she isn't joining them, she replies that she has already eaten. Ricky grabs her hand, saying, just a moment, but she pulls her hand away and heads into the kitchen. Adit asks Ricky, what's wrong with him? And Ricky replies that he was just kidding. Meanwhile, Axon is shocked to discover blood in the bathroom, and as he tries to investigate, Salastri's shawl falls down from above, startling him. However, when he looks up, he finds no one there. Suddenly, his head is pulled into the water basin. He struggles to free himself and finally manages to pull his head out, falling back in the process. After regaining his composure, he checks inside the water basin and finds a coin. Meanwhile, Audit tells Yudi that he is going to the hill to keep his fiancée Alicia updated, and Yudi says he will accompany him. Oxon rushes to Ricky, showing him the coin and asking if he recognizes it. Ricky examines it closely and identifies it as the pin of their college's student association. 
Aksan explains that Yudi and Adit were members, and that he found the pin in the bathroom, at the spot where Salastri died. In a flashback, Ricky and Aksan follow the trail of blood into the bathroom, where they discover Salastri's dead body. And then, they also notice Imam's body there as well. Ricky asks Aksan if he's high, because there's no way the pin could still be there after all this time. Aksan admits he doesn't know why the pin was there, but he feels it's a clue suggesting that Yudi and Adit might be the killers. Meanwhile, Adit tells Yudi that he don't trust Ricky and Aksan and asks, did he saw Ricky's attitude toward Laura's? He bet Ricky wanted to sleep with Celastri, but then she rejected him, and then he killed her, and then he dragged them into the situation. Yudi then interrupts and stops at it, saying he feels like someone is following them. But Adit asks him not to make things up. Suddenly, Wong So jumps out in front of them, startling them, and asks where they're going so late at night, to which Yudi replies that they're heading uphill to look for a signal. Meanwhile, Aksan tells Ricky that Yudi and Adit must confess to killing Celastri. Ricky agrees, expressing his hope that they will confess, particularly Adit. He reveals his frustration with Adit, who seems to act as though his life is perfect and he's so successful. On the other hand, Aksan tries to find a signal, while Wong So looks at the sky and comments that it's a perfect crescent moon and that many people will get possessed. Wong So then bows down and starts apologizing. And when Yudi asks him what he saw, Wong So abruptly stands up and runs away, screaming, causing Aksan's phone to fall and break. Now while coming down the hill, Yudi says he don't think this was the way they came up. And suddenly both of them slip and fall, tumbling. When they get up, they find the well there and Yudi asks, is this that well? In a flashback, we see the four of them bringing Salastri and Imam's bodies to the well. However, when they put them down, we see that Salastri was still alive at that time. Yudi picks her up to throw her into the well, but gets shocked to see her alive and ends up throwing her down. Adit says that they need to make Ricky and Axon ask for forgiveness because they merely followed their lead and are not truly guilty. Meanwhile, Manur prepares for the wrong gang ceremony, getting Laura's ready to become the true wrong gang dancer for the village. She drapes Celastri's shawl over Lara's, causing her to enter a possessed state. Lara's then begins performing the wrong gang dance, and at the same time, Yudi and Adit hear the wrong gang music and Yudi expresses his curiosity about who has replaced Celastri. They see Lara's dancing, and Adit asks Yudi why she is dancing like Celastri. Just then, Haiti approaches, startling them, and he suggests they return to the guest house before they are discovered, noting that the wrong gang ceremony is a sacred process in the village. Adit explains that they were just passing by and came here accidentally, and they then leave the scene. Meanwhile, Celastri's shawl drifts over Ricky, waking him up, and he sees Lara's there, who beckons him to follow her. She leads him into the guest house and starts dancing in front of him. Then she takes him into the bedroom, where the windows and doors close automatically. Laras asks Ricky if he would like to dance with her, to which he says he would love to. However, as they dance, she wraps her shawl around his neck and suddenly strangles him. Celastri then reveals her demonic form and grabs his neck. Meanwhile, Yudi and Adit return to find Aksan drunk and asleep, and only then do they hear Ricky gagging from inside the house. They try to enter but find the bedroom door locked, and Aksan also wakes up to the noise. Inside, Celastri is strangling Ricky, but when they break into the room, they find Ricky choking. Adit quickly grabs a bucket of water and throws it on Ricky, bringing him back to his senses. After a while, Yudi mentions that Wang So had told him people get possessed during the crescent moon. Oxen asks why it happened to Ricky and not to them, to which Adit replies, because Ricky killed Celastri. Oxon dismisses this as nonsense, but Adit retorts, asking when he will stop being Ricky's pawn. Aksan then says that one of them killed her and reveals that he has evidence, showing them the pin he found in the water basin earlier that day. He claims it's as if Celastri showed him who the real culprit is. Adit points out the implausibility of finding the pin after more than seven years, accusing Aksan of planting it to frame them. He accuses Aksan of killing Celastri, arguing that he is the only one who couldn't control his lust. Aksan, angered, questions his right to judge his morality, 
To which Adit says, because he married a girl he impregnated, someone he met at his regular massage parlor. This enrages Axen, and he begins attacking Adit, leading to a physical fight. Yudi intervenes, separating them, and warns that if no one is willing to confess, they should stop accusing each other before someone ends up dead. He reminds them that they are there only to receive an accolade, and after that, they will return to Jakarta and be done with all of this. The next morning, Haiti and Lares arrive at the guest house and are shocked to see the disarray inside. Later, Adit asks Haiti if Marto is in his office, to which Haiti explains that he has gone to the Regency office. Oksan then states that they want to return home to Jakarta, and Adit asks Haiti to pass that message to Marto. However, Lares mentions that Marto had asked her and Haiti to show them their work, but Ricky insists it's not necessary as the four of them are leaving today. Haiti inquires about the reason for their sudden departure, so he can inform his father. Suddenly, Laris, now possessed, asks if they really have to leave. She reminds them that the event will take place later that night and that everything has been prepared, not just by them, but also by the villagers. Under the influence of the possession, they all agree with her and decide to stay, abandoning their plans to leave. After finishing their meal, Adit and Yudi accompany Laris and Haiti and Haiti asks why they left in such a hurry during their last visit, to which Adit responds that the campus had called them back immediately to submit their thesis. Laura's inquires if they got the chance to watch Celastri's wrong gang dance, to which they reply that they did and that they enjoyed it. Laura's mentions that it's unfortunate that Celestri went missing shortly after. She adds that there were rumors she ran away with her boyfriend, Imam, and Hadi chimes in, saying there was even a rumor that Celastri left with them. Adit laughs, dismissing the idea as ridiculous, and then Haiti shows them that their names are still engraved there. Yudi thanks Haiti and Laras for taking them there, but his attention is suddenly drawn to Wangso. Yudi runs after him, and Adit quickly follows behind, and as they leave, Hadi stops Laras and tells her to go home. Yudi watches in horror as Wangso jumps off a cliff, and when Adit catches up and asks what's wrong, Yudi explains that Wangso just jumped off the cliff. Hadi asks if he is sure, to which Yudi insists he did, but Hadi reveals that Wangso had actually killed himself at that very spot some time ago. Shocked, Adit asks why Wangso would have done such a thing to which Hattie explains that the entire village knew Wang So was infatuated with Celastri. Three weeks after Celastri went missing, Wang So suddenly appeared wearing her shawl and carrying a radio. The villagers believed he was the one responsible for her disappearance and death and began beating him. However, Marto intervened, insisting that Wang So couldn't have been the culprit. During this, Wang So saw Celastri jumping from the cliff and in his desperation, he followed her jumping to his death. Haiti adds that, after further investigation, it was discovered that the shawl Wang So had been wearing wasn't actually Celastri's. On their way back to the guest house, Yudi tells Adit that the villagers are so nice to them, so they should confess as a group. But Adit dismisses the idea and tells Yudi that he needs to go to the village hall's office to call his fiance. Later that night, during the event, Adit delivers a speech expressing his gratitude to the villagers for the accolade and the certificate of merit they've been awarded. He mentions that he would like to contribute some money for the betterment of the village. Marto then steps in, saying that to honor their arrival, they have prepared a special concoction drink from the village. Manure offers them the drink, and as she does, a flashback reveals that when Adit went to the village hall's office earlier, he overheard a conversation between Haiti and Marto. During their discussion, Adit discovered that the villagers already knew that he and the others were responsible for Celastri's death, Haiti had asked. Isn't there any other way? To which Marto replied, if any of them confesses, maybe they can still save their lives, but if they don't, they will need to sacrifice all four of them. Adit does not drink that drink, and then Laras performs the wrong gang dance. But after some time, the effect of that drink starts showing on them, and instead of Laras, they start seeing the ghost of Celastri dancing. Seeing this, all three of them get very scared, and at this moment, it becomes clear that Adit had previously confessed to Marto that Celastri and Imam were killed by Yudi, Aksan, and Ricky. He revealed that he was unable to intervene because he was threatened by them. Celastri had been raped by the three of them while she was unconscious, and when she regained consciousness, they panicked and killed her. Marto announces to the villagers that tonight, 
Solastri will be avenged, ensuring that their lives will return to peace as they once were. Yudi wakes up at the windmill and sees Wang So dancing around him. Overcome with guilt, Yudi apologizes to Wang So and cries for forgiveness. But suddenly, Celestri appears beside him. Meanwhile, Ricky and Axon wake up in the forest, and Axon hears wrong gang music and sees Celestri dancing around the well. Yudi continues to apologize to Celestri, but she possesses him, taking control of his body and compelling him to dance with her. On the other hand, Celastri fills the well with money and tells Axon that here is the accolade for what he did for their village. Axon rushes to get the money and falls into the well, and we see demonic Celastri laughing at him. Meanwhile, Celastri continues to make Yudi dance, causing his bones to break in the process, and then she wraps her shawl around his neck and strangles him with it. She then asks Ricky if he remembers her and begins dancing in front of him, saying let's dance together. Terrified, Ricky tries to flee from there, but she throws her shawl and stops him and throws him away. Ricky, still on the ground, watches as Celestri moves towards him, asking where is he going, and then she suddenly gets up, prompting Ricky to run for his life. He finds a cycle and tries to flee, but gets horrified seeing the well. Meanwhile, Celestri strangles Yudi with her shawl, and he is impaled by the windmill. Celestri then makes the windmill pull his head out of his body. On the other hand, Ricky tries to flee, but Celastri appears, causing him to fall back and be impaled by the cycle's spokes. The next morning, the villagers throw the dead bodies into the well, and Menya reminds Marto not to forget to leave one space, or else Celastri won't find peace, to which Marto responds, saying he believes no one can escape from their sins. Two months later, Adit and Alicia are getting married, and as they thank their guests for attending, Adit hears wrong gang music and is shocked to see Lara's dancing on stage with Haiti standing behind her with the radio. He asks Alicia about it, and she explains that he had requested a wrong gang dance from the village that honored him. Adit's father-in-law remarks that he wasn't informed there would be this kind of performance and praises the preservation of their nation's culture. He then asks Adit if he knows the dancer, and when Adit confirms he does, his father-in-law inquires if she could perform at a private event for their business associates. Adit agrees to arrange it, and his father-in-law leaves. Later, while he is making out with his wife, it is revealed in a flashback. Adit was the one who tried to Celastri, and when she tried to stop him, he strangled her with her shawl. In the struggle to save herself, Celastri got hold of Adit's pin, and she pricked him with it, but Adit knocked her unconscious. Suddenly, Celastri's ghost appears in Alicia's place causing Adit to panic. As he tries to escape, she scratches his back, causing him to fall. She then says, let's carry on, and moves toward him, leaping onto him and throwing a black liquid over him. It's then revealed that, in a fit of rage, Adit had previously grabbed the radio and beaten Celastri with it, smashing her face and ultimately killing her. In a desperate attempt to defend himself, Adit does the same thing again only to horrifyingly realize that he has killed Alicia. It is then revealed that when Imam entered the house searching for Celastri, Adit, who was hiding behind the door, killed him as well. Afterward, he dragged both Imam and Celastri's bodies to the bathroom, where his pin fell. He then returned and smeared Celastri's blood on his friend's bodies to divert suspicion from himself. Alicia's father knocks on the door, asking her to open it, but Adit flees the scene. And when Alicia's father eventually enters, he is shocked to find her lifeless body. Outside, Haiti asks Lara's if they are finished, to which she replies not yet, as they need to ensure that Menyer's wishes are fulfilled. And we then see Adit committing by hanging himself from a railing. The scene then shifts to Mangansari village, where names have been removed from the stone, and the movie ends here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the chills, hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss a scare. Until next time, stay spooky.